Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to spotlight a beautiful ukulele from Petros Ukuleles, and it is priced at $9,000. $50. This is by far the most expensive ukulele I have ever played, held in my hands. It's incredibly gorgeous, but we're going to find out why it is priced at $9,050, and you're going to see why it's completely worth it. If you haven't seen my interview with Master Luthier Bruce Petros, I'll leave that in the cards above and the description box below so that you can get to know him, his story, and his work. He is just a delight. <laughs> He's incredibly talented. He is a master luthier, has been building for 45 years. And he's the most humble, kind man you have ever met in your life. It's just such a treat to be able to sit down with him, get to know him, get to mo know more about construction because construction fascinates me. I think it's absolutely fascinating when somebody can just think of something and then they're just going to make it. <laughs> and they have the patience in which to do that. So I'm just, I admire him very, very much. So please check out that interview. I'm gonna spotlight this model today, but this is still only a glimpse as to what he could do or custom make for you. So let's get into the specs. Here's a Macassar Ebony and Adirondack Spruce tenor ukulele with Celtic ornamentation. The top is Adirondack Spruce and the back and sides are Macassar Ebony as well as the fingerboard. The inlay is a maple Celtic design. The bridge is Ebony. The purfling and rosette is Celtic. It has Rubner tuners and Ebony buttons. The sound port is even bound with curly koa. The overall scale is 17 inches. So he only uses master gray tone wood, like Adirondack Spruce, and then you have the Macassar Ebony. So this is why it's special. Adirondack Spruce is a heavy tone wood with the highest stiffness of all top woods across the long grain. It adds a lot of power to an instrument, but it won't start to sound distorted or muddy if the instrument is strummed aggressively. It remains clear whether you're finger picking with the lightest touch or strumming so loud to wake the neighbors. Macassar Ebony is an exotic wood that is also very strong, very heavy and very hard, which is great for a resonant instrument. It has a mahogany neck. Usually his necks are made out of butternut because they're lighter. The mahogany neck is a little more dense, a little heavier, and so it balances out the instrument. Very smart design choice, and it's incredibly well balanced. But even though the tone wood is heavier, it's stiffer, this instrument is not heavy at all. It's absolutely beautiful, very, very light, very responsive. This just sings. It's absolutely beautiful. This instrument is so resonant, it's so responsive, that I have to keep my hand over the strings like this when I'm talking <laughs> throughout this whole entire video while I've been filming. It's because it's so responsive that when I talk, the vibrations from my voice, the sound waves, they, they're picked up by the strings and then the body starts to resonate. It's that responsive. It's that responsive. Yes. <laughs> the intonation is perfect. It's crystal clear up and down the fretboard. Just gorgeous. And the details, I mean, it's stunningly beautiful. It's so incredibly lovely to look at. Everywhere you turn on this instrument, there's something interesting to look at. Every 
everything is bound. And even the back with the beautiful Celtic design, that's not a sticker, that is Perflex. Recently, Paul Simon received his first guitar adorned with Perflex, a new revolutionary flexible perfling that Martin guitarist used in its limited edition and featured it at 2018 Summer NAMM show. Now the sides just beautifully bound and instead of using dots, you see how he blocked them off like a checkerboard? That's just really, really innovative. I think that's really beautiful and it's, pro it's probably really, really time consuming. It did take me a little bit of time to be able to get used to it because I'm so used to the dots and I call this my mental mile marker, my ukulele GPS. That's, it really helps me find my place on the fretboard. Took me a little while to, to get the color coding instead of the dot, but I think the detail is worth it. I don't think it's a big deal to have dots versus the blocks. I think it's really pretty. I do want to talk about the sound port. Now, sound ports are becoming more and more popular on ukuleles, and uh, it's not just for aesthetics or just have a personal monitor so you can hear yourself more clearly. And then here is this tiny little hole that the sound is coming out of. But what it does is that it relieves the pressure off of the top of the instrument when it's vibrating, when you're strumming. In order to make it resonate a little bit more, you have a pressure valve that just releases that sound that much more. So if you have an instrument that is mass produced, there are some details that they're going to have to skip to keep the cost down so that there is a profit to be made and it can keep the cost down for the consumer. I have never really seen a sound port finished because it's really difficult to do and it's incredibly expensive because it's so time consuming. Now this, it's bound, it's beautiful. And uh, you don't necessarily have to do it, but I love how he always combs over every single detail because he never wants to phone it in. He never just says, oh, it's good enough. Nobody's really gonna care. And he's like, no, I, I care. So I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it right. One of the things that I do and I've been doing on my guitars, I don't know if I was the first to do it or not, but I know there are others that are now finally following. But if you you know look at the bridge, you know most bridges this well let's talk about the saddle. The saddle is standing straight up and down ordinarily, and then with time they have a tendency to kind of start leaning forward. And now intonation is a really important thing. That's you know when you play the the harmonic and, and the fretted note, it's got to be the same. You have to compensate for string stretch. Not a whole lot on an ukulele guitar. It's much more, but if that saddle gets closer and closer, your intonation is not going to be right. And for whatever reason, bridges have a tendency to lean forward with time. So mine are built right off the bat with a 10 degree backward angle. So for one, that keeps it from leaning forward and it helps push the strings, the saddle down into the slot, which gives you better contact, which works really good for pickups for one and for just just all all by itself it's a it's a better way to do it bruce says that it takes him approximately a hundred hours from start to finish to make a custom ukulele and also even so that hundred hours it's probably more than a hundred hours just looking at the beautiful details <sighs> I want one. So like I said before, this is only a glimpse as to what he can custom make. You can choose the tone wood, the designs, you can have something tell your story. And I think that's really important because if you have something that's custom made for you, it's retrofitted to your preferences, but also it could tell your story. So for more information, you can visit Bruce's website and he could custom make your very own one of a kind instrument. He also has a Facebook page, so be sure to follow him on his journey and stay apprised of all of his developments. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.